2 is going to talk about the basic operations of the IC7300, how to mitigate noise, the tools that we have to, to basically include what we hear and what we don't want to hear with this radio. Uh, this would also transfer the 705 and the 7610 and to a lesser degree the 7100. Okay, so if you guys want to get in close, First thing I want to do is orient to the emoji screens. Ask me how this applies for you. Turn this up so we can help it. <clears throat> so we can hear the noise. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in phone, which will be noisier. put it in the widest filter. Let's look at okay. so none of the um, the noise control is on. That's pretty much wide open. And you can hear it's just it's just nasty with noise. Um, so one of the first things that we can use, and especially for a contest, is and this won't pertain to, to WSJT because you're going to run your AGC differently. But if you're running an, an audio-oriented mode, first thing you want to do is go after your automatic gain control. And the idea behind the setting of the automatic gain control is you want the grain, the automatic gain to amplify signal without amplifying noise. So generally, I prefer to run a fast. That way it'll, it'll, it'll magnify the signal before the noise can catch up. Now, if you're doing rag chew or something else, and you, and you just want to isolate on a on a signal that you're working over a long period of time, you probably want slow. But that's one of the first things to do is to run the AGC, at least for contest, run it fast. Um, 7300 has three settings for preamps. <clears throat> Depending on the band, um, you may or may not want a preamp. Uh, for 20, it's not necessary. For 40, sometimes it is. For the 20 and 15, a lot of times not. Again, your settings for WSJT might be a little bit different. So these are the two of the first tools we look at. The third one is the filter itself. The 7300, the 705, 7610 all have three uh, adjusting the filters. Filter 1, filter 2, and filter 3. Filter 1 is the most open. It's a uh, 3K, um, 3K hertz width. And you can toggle through them. And you can hear basically the wider that filter, the more noise it's coming into us. So, you, again, for, for digital modes, you want that wide open because you've got that wide, wide band that's, that's all very good signal. For CW, because a CW signal is, is much more narrow than, than a sideband, go to, you can go to a filter three, and then you can adjust. What these are is they're, two, they're low pass and high pass adjustable filters, so we can use them to really see how I've really tightened that down. Do you keep it center on the frequency or do you tend to adjust it lower side band, upper side band, and pitch off to the... Well, um, I, I basically pinched it in, mm -hmm. but sometimes, especially if we have a, uh, an adjacent signal that we want to attenuate out, we can just shift 
But say I have somebody that's that's below me, and I'm trying to work a signal that's right next to it. It's frustrating, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah. You gotta be fast so on I, the buttons. You yeah, gotta be kidding that's me. one thing that I'd like to see. You know, so I can, if I've got a, a signal that's below, that's above me in the band, I can attenuate him out okay. and just pass, you know, basically I can hear what's right next to him, but not him. Right. So it's a way to do that upper or lower. So that, that's probably one of the biggest tools we have to control the noise that's making it to our ears. Now let's see. Then to reset it, just yeah, it's a good demonstration on a noisy band, isn't it? <laughs> um, so those are the those are the things that allow us to eliminate adjacent noise. The next tools we have are are going to reduce noise and signal. So that's. And those are the noise, noise blanker, the noise, these right here. The notch, the noise blanker, and the noise reducer. Those are, those are digital noise filters and they filter everything you hear. If you're working, if you've got a good band like 20 was yesterday afternoon, you could probably run that if you needed it because the signals are strong. Or if, if you want to work strong signals, you don't want to hear the weak signals anyway, those are your tools to do it. Um, generally, I run them off. Because I, I want to hear everything that's there and try to, you know, try to attenuate it out another way. The last thing we have, and if you've sat in front of a 7300 or 705, you've seen the little OVF red indicator. Mm -hmm. that, that's, not a, that's not telling you the radio's overloaded or it's about to go up in smoke. That's not what that means. The analog to digital circuit that's converting everything that's coming in into digital signal so the, uh, so the radio can use it, that just means that that A to D conversion is saturated. There's too much signal, too much noise and signal there. It's just run out of bits. I, I don't know how many, whether it's eight bit or 12 or 16 or 14 or 16. 14 or 16. Yeah. So it's just yeah, it just runs out of out of bits to to delineate between signal and noise. So when you're starting to see that, well, you'll start out if you can see that indication. I'm on the squelch side. When I see that little white dot move, I'm actually squelching. When I bring it back to there, I'm at full RF gain. Now to overcome an OVF indicator, or to generally bring the noise level of the band down, I just take away RF gain. And you can see it in your waterfall. You can hear it in your ears. Um, and you can fine tune how much noise you're, you're amplifying. You're basically, it's amplifying full signal, noise and signal. Definitely not as harsh. Right. Yeah. You can take the edge off of it, but still be able to work weak signals. Yep. Um, so this is probably, you know, like through an operation like this, you know, we're probably going to be working this all the time, yeah. being aware of the OVF and aware of the, of the noise. Now there is a notch filter. I've never used it. This one, I need to look into this and see what what that will do for us. It's the only tool I haven't used. So those are really the tools that I know of to to improve the audio <coughs> response and make it easy on the ears. Yeah. Can you show me how you found that menu again? Function. Function. Thank you. I know. <laughs> it's only one press away. Yeah. So close. So close. <laughs> it's the same menu as the 705. Yeah. Is that yeah. Is it the quick too? Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, just like you know, when you had 20 over overloading on you mm -hmm. yesterday afternoon, we backed that off, and you were able to decode it FT4 again. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's just noise management. I usually leave mine on the border of overload. My 75. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I typically run at that yeah. edge. Yeah. AGC, sometimes off or fast. But then I'm using JTDX, which also manages AGC. So. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of tools there. The good thing is the uh, the ICOM family of radios are they're a, what a full, a direct sampling SDR, so they get everything. The bad news is then we got to figure out what to do with everything. Tend to be wide. <laughs> you know, weak signal stuff, they do a good job. 705 is fantastic. On it this is. Thing. It really is. So that's what I have. I hope, I know, you know, you probably had seen most of this and applied it to what you're doing. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I definitely have tried all those tools. Yeah. Yep. Now, it's not going to help. I mean, it, it's funny that, you know, he's blocking you now. But I, I was running 100 watts of CW just a few a few 100K below you on 40 last night. And, yeah, and you, knew, you knew I was there. Yeah, but, yeah, you're it, a lot narrower. Yeah, it was, it was pretty, it was almost, it was unusable with Roger on yeah. 40. So. Yeah, you, you, he showed me. Yeah, he yeah. definitely was blanking. Well, that's a great presentation. Thank you very much. Good deal. Thank you, guys.